Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you've had a nice weekend. Uh, today in science, we're going to be talking about the six different types of ecological relationships. Our goals for today, Monday, March 23rd, are number one, please be sure to take notes on the six types of ecological relationships, mainly because you're going to have an open notes quiz tomorrow, so you're going to want to have something, obviously, to refer to. Number two, please view the video clips I have in this folder highlighting some of the stranger eco ecological relationships that um, I have seen. I'm forewarning you, some of them are fairly gross. Um, remember, organisms in nature, they don't care about gross. They care about staying alive. So these three relationships you most likely have not seen. Um, if you're someone gets, that gets a little queasy with things, you might want to skip the parasitism one. Number three, I'm going to need you to complete the symbiotic relationships homework assignment. Uh, it's a PDF. You're going to download it, mark it up as you guys have been doing. You've been doing a great job with that. And please submit it to me by 9 a.m. on Wednesday, March 25th. Now, when we're talking about ecological relationships, we're again coming back to this concept of energy. Remember, every organism needs energy to survive. So they're going to spend a large part of their existence seeking out energy, seeking out food sources. And because of this, uh, you know, because of this being their main goal in life, many species have developed these, these complex interspecies relationships, very strange in some cases, uh, in order to help one or more of them survive more effectively. Now, in today's lessons, we're going to be looking at these six relationships, and I want you to kind of keep in mind which organism or organisms are benefiting, which one or ones are being harmed. Now, symbiotic relationships, students typically have heard of these. Um, however, I find they only, you know, when they think of symbiosis, they tend to think of just the positive symbiotic relationships, things that um, are cooperative and both organisms are benefiting. But really, a symbiotic relationship is any relationship in which two species are living in close physical association. So one species can benefit, another can be harmed, another could be killed. We're going to kind of break these down into the six different types we could have. Let's start a brand new notes page called Ecological Relationships. And our focus for today is what are examples of ecological relationships. Your goal really should be at the end of this lesson, um, given a situation of two uh, species and their you know, relationship, you should be able to correctly identify which of the six relationships is happening, because that's really what the quiz is going to be like tomorrow. Okay, let's define symbiotic relationship. This is just, again, a broad term that all of our six ecological relationships are going to fit under. So a symbiotic relationship is the interaction of two different species living in close physical association. The first three are very short, sweet, and simple. Um, and I, I don't think anyone's going to have any trouble understanding them. So let's jump right in. The first relationship is a producer-consumer relationship. Very simply, a producer makes the food, the consumer eats the food. Obviously, this is going to be beneficial to the consumer because it's getting energy and not beneficial to our producer, which is getting eaten. Let's put this one in our notes. Our second type of symbiotic relationship is a predator-prey relationship. Again, fairly straightforward. Our predator is going to hunt our prey. Obviously, this is going to benefit our predator. It's going to harm our prey as it gets eaten for food. Our third type of relationship is competition. In, a, in competition, and again, we have competition between different species, and sometimes we have competition between individuals of the same species, particularly if they're fighting for mates or hunting grounds. Um, but basically, we have two organisms that are fighting for resources. The resources typically are going to be space, food, or mates. In the first picture, we have two bugs um, competing for nectar. In the second picture, we have two types of scavengers competing for uh, a carcass of something that looks pretty good to them. Let's add that one to our notes. Keep in mind, plants can also compete. It's not just, uh, you know, not just animals that compete for things. Plants can compete for sunlight. Uh, they can compete for water in some cases and, and space. Okay, let's move on to our three uh, remaining relationships. And these are the relationships that my students need a little bit more practice identifying. The first one is mutualism. Mutualism is any relationship in which both species are going to benefit from each other. So this is the most positive of all the symbiotic relationships. Uh, if you look to the, the left, the caterpillars have nectar organs, this species of caterpillar, I should say, should say 
that the ants drink from. So the, the caterpillar will actually release droplets of nectar in hopes of attracting and keeping these ants near it because they act like little ant bodyguards. The second picture, this is one of my favorite symbiotic relationships, mutualistic relationships, um, because it, a honey badger, which most of you know, is always on the lookout for honey, for beehives. They're not very good at finding them though. So a, the bird next to it, which we call a honey guide bird, will actually lead him to the nest or, or the hive um, by calling out and flying back and forth to the badger in the nest and, and just making a, you know, a big fuss until the honey badger comes over. The bird itself is not able to uh, get any of the, the bee larva or the honey from the hive because it, it'll get stung, it'll, it'll get killed. However, honey badgers are quite tough, as you know. So the honey badger will go in, it will um, you know, fight off all those bees and actually get to the honey. And interestingly enough, it always leaves some food, bee larva and honey, for the honey guy bird. So they have a really kind of interesting uh, and cute little relationship that benefits both of them. Let's get mutualism in our notes. And mutualism, both species mutually benefit from one another. Okay, our next example of a symbiotic relationship is something called commensalism. In commensalism, one species benefits, the other is neither harmed nor benefited. So it's just kind of indifferent. Um, this is also on the fairly positive end, I would say, uh, of relationships, meaning both species, no one's harmed in this case. Um, a humpback whale has barnacles that kind of uh, live on it. That's how they obtain their food. They get a place to live. And the humpback whale is no worse for the wear. It doesn't bother him at all. If we look at uh, the anemone and Nemo, the anemone really doesn't get any benefit or harm. Um, however, the, the clownfish, the Nemo fish, actually gets some protection because most organisms uh, are stung by our, our anemone. But because of the, the type of mucus that the clownfish are coated with, they actually do not get hurt by it. So let's add commensalism. In commensalism, again, one species benefits, the other is completely unaffected. Our last type of relationship, and this one I'm sure you've heard of, is parasitism. Parasitism uh, occurs when one species benefits, the other is harmed, but usually not killed, okay, for the most part. Um, they can be harmed to the point where you know, they're not doing much else except providing energy for the parasite, but typically they don't die, or if they do die, it's going to be after quite a long period. So for example, a mosquito is a great common example of a parasite. Any sort of tick is going to be a parasite. Um, if you look at the other picture on the right, there's a parasitic wasp that lays her eggs really uh, right up against a caterpillar's skin. Okay, so that's a really close-up picture. Those white things are the wasp larva. Now, the wasp larva will actually... Um, eventually kind of hatch, but as they're kind of, you know, getting bigger, they will eat uh, parts of the caterpillar for energy, avoiding the vital organs so uh, the caterpillar can stay alive and they can have their energy source until they're ready to hatch. It's pretty creepy there. Let's add parasitism, if you haven't already, into your notes. One species benefits, the other is harmed. There's actually an interesting fungus that the spores will land on ants and the spore goes straight to the ant's brain, and it actually will kind of control the ant. Okay, so it, it's very weird. Sometimes they're called zombie ants at this point. Um, the, the fungus will direct the ant to climb up to a high point um, and just kind of latch on, and then eventually it will be, um, it'll start growing basically what looks like a, a little tiny mushroom will, will burst from the, the ant's head. That's probably one of the creepiest ones I've heard of, um, but just if you're interested in more on that, just Google ant, fungus, parasite. Below this, we're going to make a simple table. This is going to be kind of our cheat sheet for uh, referring to. Please make three columns and leave one for a heading, or three rows rather. And we're going to title the first column relationship and the second two organism one and organism two. Let's go ahead and put mutualism here. And let's just do, a, you know, I'm all about having pictures for quick reference and quick understanding. Let's put a plus sign. Plus sign meaning that organism benefits. And in mutualism, we know both organisms benefit, so let's have two plus signs. In commensalism, one organism benefits and the other is unaffected. So let's just put like a zero with a, a slash through it, meaning nothing, nothing's here. Nothing's happening. Lastly, parasitism. The first organism, the parasite's going to benefit. 
The second organism is going to be harmed. So let's put a little minus sign. 